Hey guys, it's me, the Dom Fanatic, and welcome to week 7 of the GBA D League. This week, we are up against its Greg Ulater, um, 60 and his LA Clefable. Now, if I sound slightly peeved off at all during this battle, it's because I just nearly finished my last narration. 20 minutes of video recorded, and my brother just decides to burst into the room. Oh, I'm now off, bye. Closes the door just ruins the whole thing so I'm doing this for a second time at least I'm now a bit more you know uh, knowledgeable of what happened in the game because we did have this what is this it's actually Sunday I'm recording this which is really bad um, so it was Wednesday we played so it's been a few days I haven't really watched it over other until now when I've tried to record the game so if you haven't seen my team build already would recommend you do that because it's got a lot of information on the monster we've brought what i expected greg to bring uh, and, and what sets he could potentially be using um so lots of information there but this is what you're all here for it's the main event we are here for our battle versus greg and as you can see on the screen he has got the rotom wash the zygarde snake form i'll call it snake form i know it's 50 percent sylvalli Need to try and figure out what type that is. Mega Gallade, Celesteela, and Nihilego. So just a team of threats. Um, the only thing I wasn't really expecting is the Sil Valley. I say wasn't expecting, potentially wasn't expecting because uh, it could be any type. He hasn't bought it this season, I don't think yet. So uh, you know, I wasn't really sure if he'd bring it. But um, the, the rest of his mons, I really did expect him to bring. So. Um, Expecting kind of like a physically defensive Rotom. Um, Zygarde, like I said in the team, but it could be anything. Sylvalli, again, could be anything because its typings can change. Mega Glade is just a, a physical threat, which is just kind of shot up, kind of like in popularity because of that speed buff that Mega's got this generation. Um, so I'm really afraid of that, and I've used it in the PPL myself to quite a good sort of. Um, level so uh, I know what it can do Celesteela is Celesteela it does fat things and sets up and kills things and if Celesteela isn't scary enough Nihiligo is there just as a backup plan in case so really 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 scary team here we're facing um but we well a uh, quick overview of what we've got physical defensive or physically defensive Kofa Kriegus um kind of like a offensive bulky Zerka tree uh offensive bulky Crocodile, especially defensive Clefable, um, Waterium Z, uh, Floatzel, and Megalopony. Um, Megalop goes in on this team, basically, depending on the Sil Valley typing. Um, otherwise, it's going to have a good time. Um, just clicking high jump kick here, there, and everywhere. So, without further ado, without sort of rambling on anymore, I am a rambling expert. We are just going to go into this game and see what unfolds. We have got the Lusamine music this week. Apologies if it's a bit loud. Um, I've tried to mix around with the uh, mix around the sound level, so I'm hoping this is okay. But we're going to lead with Old Man Tut, uh, the Kerfagrigus, and our opponent is going to lead with the Rotom Wash. So I'm quite happy to, to sit in here and let Kerfagrigus take a hit um, because Rotom isn't the strongest mon, and Kerfagrigus has got a decent special block naturally, and he gets a crit turn one, which is a double-edged sword. One, I'm at a low amount of health, so I have to be careful. But two, uh, if I click Pain Split, I am going to be doing more damage to something on my opponent's team. So, we do go for the will o -Wisp turn 1, and this will o -Wisp is actually really crucial, um, which you'll see later on in the game. It does nullify his leftovers, which we find out he does have next turn. Uh, no, we don't. We find out later in the game he does have leftovers. And obviously, because he switches moves, we know he's not choiced anyway. I'm forced to go for Pain Split here, and because he doesn't have the Alolan Marowak, thank God, by the way, um, I can freely click Pain Split and get a lot of my health back. Um, Kofagrigus is, uh, doesn't have much HP anyway, so this Pain Split just like works really well, and we regain a lot of HP there. I think after the leftovers, we nearly regain like a uh, like 100 HP, which is really good, um, considering I need to take on physical threats like this Zygarde. However, the way he brings it in is a bit suspicious. Um, I'm just kind of forced to click Shadow Ball because uh, if he wants to substitute. I have to try and break it. If he wants to attack me, then the more damage I get on this side, the better. Um, he does click substitute, and we don't break the sub with the shadow ball. And I am like, oh boy, um, what do I do now? Um, another shadow ball will no doubt break the substitute. Um, no mon is that bulky enough to take two, other than Blissey maybe. But um, we do. Re he does reveal toxic here, and I jokingly said before the game. Please don't make it a story game, like Mine vs. Jolt, because we had joked about that before. And he goes, I'm sorry, Jack. I think this is what he was hinting at. <laughs> um, 
he's gonna. I'm sorry, I'm gonna click Shadow Ball again because uh, I need to break the substitute. And he's at the point of health after leftovers, thanks to thanks to leftovers, where he can click sub again quite freely. Um, and I'm in a bad position because I'm toxic now, so I'm gonna be losing health um, at quite a quick rate because of the toxic. And the leftovers isn't gonna recover that. And he's just gonna be sitting behind a sub. Now I don't know what his two other moves are. I don't know if he's got a setup, I don't know what offensive moves he's got. He could easily have Coil or Dragon Dance with Thousand Arrows. Uh, thousand, yeah, Thousand Arrows, the one that hits floating things. Because it does okay against my team. Now I'm going to go into Zekatry because I'm Shookerberry here. Um, as I mentioned in my team builder, I'm a bulkier kind of one. Um, so I'll definitely take a hit because I know it's not banded or Zemu. But he reveals Thousand Arrows, which is the one which traps your mons. So if I was Air Balloon, I'd be in a really good position right now. Um, I did consider Air Balloon, but I wasn't sure if Thousand Arrows still hits things on Air Balloons, so I didn't bother. Um, but because uh, the Shookerberry keeps us quite a healthy amount, I am now trapped. I'm going to look at Hidden Power Ice. Um, so we break the sub, so he can pretty much kill my Zerkatry off here, which is really scary for me, because it's my best way of dealing with the Celesteela, but I kind of had to do this. Um, and the Thousand Arrows is going to be able to take out my uh, Zerkatry at this point. Um, which is a shame, because it's my one of my new transfers and it didn't really get to do too much, but what it did was really important. It made the Zygarde, um, it left it open for my Megalopony to come in and just kill it with a move. Which is probably going to be Ice Punch, however, I need to make plays, because he has got the Zygarde uh, in, and he's got everything else pretty much fully healthy. And I want to start getting some momentum back in my way. So he brings in the Celesteela. Remember from the team builder, Adamant Lopany can do up to 52% with a high jump kick. Um, I'm just going to do it because he's got zero switchings to high jump kick. Um, who wants to bring in Gallade? Cool. Um, I'll kill him with a return. Uh, everything else just dies or, you know, gets two shot by it. We re he reveals Rocky Helmet here, but I do have a 50% to a Celesteela. That's a neutral hit. That's pretty damn tasty. Um... I'm going to switch into Crook because I get the Intimidate off and I'm pretty confident that things like Heavy Slime won't be doing too much to me. Um, he does go for the Protect. I switched out as well, scouting for that because it's something a lot of people have bought this season to try and snuff out my Megalopony. But uh, I do actually take this as my chance to set up my Stealth Rocks. He sets up Elite Seed which is expectable. Excuse me. <coughs> expectable because he doesn't have the leftovers and he needs some form of recovery. So if I had a Go Goat this week which Greg told me after the game he was very much expecting. Um, I could have been in a good position because he's Protect, Leech Seed, I'm assuming Heavy Slam, he could be Fire Blast or Air Slash. But I'm going to switch out here to my Old Man Tut. Um, just because I didn't want him to recover, uh, recover all that health. Uh, and I didn't want him to just sit there and Protect while I did nothing anyway. So I'm expecting him to click Protect here again because... He can scout out what move I'm going to do. It's going to get extra toxic damage off on my Coffer Grigus, which is fair enough. Um, but I'm going to click Will O Wisp in case he wants to switch into anything. Or if I can burn the Celesteela, it's going to be a little bit of chip damage and it's going to weaken that Heavy Slam. I'm very confident he's not going to want to stay in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click Shadow Ball because um, I need to get some damage off on some things. That's my thought process. He hasn't got a normal type, so uh, Shadow Ball will hit everything. And he does actually switch into his Nihilego. Now, because Nihilego is especially bulky, um, it's not going to do too much. But as much chip damage as I can get on this thing, the better. Because Aqua Jet uh, from Floatzel will kill from like 55% or something. So, the more chip damage I can do, the better. Um, this Nihilego can't really touch me, I don't think. Um, I don't think it gets Shadow Ball. So, unless he has like a Hidden Power Ghost or a Dark or something stupid like that, he can't do anything. What he is going to do, though, he's going to take up his chance to set up his Stealth Rocks here. Crocodile is my best switch in if he doesn't have um, Dazzling Gleam. There's literally, like, nothing he can do to touch me. Power Gem and Sludge Wave are resisted. Thunderbolt, obviously, I'm immune to. Uh, Psychic or Psyshock, I'm immune to. I don't know if it gets Psyshock, but I know it definitely gets Psychic. Um, so, he is going to switch out here because he will die to an Earthquake. Even through Shookaberry, I'd imagine, but... The fact he switches out probably means he's choiced into Stealth Rocks. Uh, I'm going to click Crunch though because Crunch would probably kill that thing if not bring it really low. Uh, and I knew he had two immunities and that Crunch does a lot of damage. If I had got a defense drop at that point, I'd be in a really good position because I think another Crunch would probably kill this thing. Um, but this is where the burn's coming in handy. The burn is negating the leftovers which we now see this thing has. Um, 
Obviously, naturally, you wouldn't expect me to stay in with a crocodile, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to click crunch, because if I can get this thing gone, Floatzel has a fantastic time. Um, he's going down to the red, which is great. Floatzel now deals with this thing, um, except he goes for a paint split, which is really annoying. So, all that work that Crook just done with these two crunches, it's pretty much nullified. Um, but luckily for me, I do have my Clefable still at full health in the background, so uh, I'm going to be able to switch into that and take some hits as, as well as possible, because this Crocodile is not going to take a Hydro Pump at this point. So, I do make that switch out into Clefable. He's going to click Hydro Pump. Wasn't expecting him to click Volt Switch that turn, because obviously I'm a ground type. Would have been a very good player if he did though. Nice smart prediction. But that Hydro Pump literally does 25% to my Clefable. Which is quite laughable considering the base power of Hydro Pump and the natural special attack of Rotom Wash. So, I'm all for it. Um, I'm going to click Knock Off here because I'm expecting him to go into the Celesteela. Not expecting him to go into the Gallade because if I do click Moonblast, that's Gallade like good as gone nearly. Um, so I'm expecting the Celesteela 100% and he does bring in the Celesteela. So the fact that I click Knock Off here is great. No more Rocky Helmet chip damage on my team. And because I'm Magic Guard, the Rocky Helmet isn't actually going to give me like any recoil or anything anyway. Um, which is nice. So um, I'm going to get the Leftovers Recovery here. And I know I can't take a Heavy Slam. I don't think even Max Defense can take Heavy Slam. Um, so I'm just going to switch out and I'm going to go into my Crocodile because I think it's probably my best thing to take this on at this point. I do have Fire Fang on here, which will be a two shot from here. Um, I do run the, the chances of flinching and burning it, which is awesome. Um, so he does go for the Heavy Slam, and it does about half of what I had left, about 50 to 60 HP. So um, after leftovers, I'm pretty confident I can live another one, which is really good. Um, I'm going to click Fire Fang here, because if he wants to Heavy Slam me again, that's fine. I don't mind at this point, but she does, he doesn't go for the Leech Seed or Protect or anything like that. Um, and he's now at the point where I can just click Crunch. I do survive, which is really good, because I now get a free Crunch. Um, he doesn't really have a switch in, other than his potential Sil Valley, but he's he's been keeping that at the back. So we still don't know what type that is. I do click Crunch, and that Celesteela does go down, um, which is really good news, because obviously Zerka Tree is gone, um, and that was my main way of killing the uh, Celesteela. So, in comes Magic, the Nihil Lego. Now, um, it does naturally outspeed me anyway, and I am bulky, but obviously I, have no, not, I haven't got enough HP anymore to, to take these hits that I want to take. So I'm going to switch out here, and I'm going to go into my old man Tut, because I'm hoping he clicks Sludge Wave, basically, and that I can take it. He's not going to be clicking Psychic, he's not going to be clicking Thunderbolt, so I'm hoping he clicks Sludge Wave, which he does, um, and I think I might be able to take another one at this point. Now, if I can get any more chip damage off on this Nihilego, every time he switches it in, it is getting weakened by the Stealth Rocks. I think one more Stealth Rock switch in, it might actually be at the point where it dies to Aqua Jet 100% from my Floatzel, which is really good. Um, but in comes the Zygarde. Now, I believe here I clicked Pain Split, um, because I was trying to get as much health back as possible. Um, but we're back now at square one, like from turn two of the game, where the Zygarde is in, and that's really not a good thing. Pain Split really doesn't achieve anything because he pretty much gets his health back anyway from the leftovers. Um, and uh, after my leftovers and the Pain Split recovery, Toxic's pretty much just going to take me back down to where I was anyway. So that was like a nothing turn except he's got his Zygarde in for free, which is absolutely terrifying. So I'm switching into Clefable at this point. I have to. I. I want to click Moonblast and just take this thing to substitute out. Except he goes to the Thousand Arrows straight away. Which is interesting because if I'd have stayed in Will O Wisp or Shadow Ball, um, I might have been able to, to kind of like whittle this thing down where I can get like a free switch into Lop again and start doing damage to his team. Um, however, because he clicked Thousand Waves, I'm actually able to live another one. So he clicks Coil here, and this is crucial. He told me after the game he felt he, he did this because he felt like there was no harm in him setting up. Um, he expected me to soft coil. I expected him for it to. <laughs> I expected him to expect me to soft ball it. However, this is a huge threat. I want it gone. I ain't messing around with this sitting in front of me anymore. Especially with... I've seen what kind of set it is. Um, so, I basically kind of sacrificed him getting a free switch in to the Mega Gallade or the... Um, what's it called? The Nihilego here. I have got a sack in Crocodile. 
I'm going to do that every single day of the week because depending on the Nihilego, I might be able to take some hits from it if it's not locked into Sludge Wave. Um, even if it gets some beast boost going. So I'm going to go in here, click Intimidate. Uh, sorry, click Intimidate. Get the Intimidate. Um, I'm sacking off Crook. Crook has done amazing this game. He took out the Cellar Stealer. Um, he's four switches. I'm very happy with his performance this week. Um, however, he's just going to click the Poison Jab and take me out. Um, he told Greg told me after the game he was very close to clicking Bulk Up, and I'm glad he didn't because if he did, um, I think I would might have just straight up lost because the plus one defense would have been a real issue for me. Um, we are going to go into the Hoff. I'm going to scare him out now. I don't know if I mentioned this in my team builder. I misprepped on this Floatzel. The fact I bring it in, obviously I do it as a bluff. Um, I know it's a bluff, but because I only outsped the Nihilego, um, I obviously didn't outspeed that, uh, that thing there right in front of me, but Greg isn't to know that he would expect me to speed creep it. Floatzel does outspeed Mega Gallade naturally. Um, and the waterfall would have done a lot of damage there. So, he switched in Rotom Wash because it's the safer switch. Now, Rotom Wash gets one more Stealth Rock switch in. He dies to a plus one Hydro Vortex from my Floatzel. I'm going to sack off my Crofagrigus. I'm playing the sack game now just to try and build as much momentum as I can and get all that chip damage I need. He Volt switches, which means he can no longer take a plus one Waterian Z from Floatzel. If he brings in the Nihil Ego here, um, it's a free switch into my float tool because Aqua Jet will kill um, at this point after the Stealth Rocks. I think it was 55% like I mentioned earlier. So I'm just going to click, uh, well, he's going to expect me to click Aqua Jet here. He's got that switch into the um, Rotom Wash Steel, which he's going to make. And because I have the balls, I don't know, made of steel, um, I do click the bulk up. And because of that and the Stealth Rocks, and because the burn has kept the leftovers negated, um, I'm now able to kill this thing with a plus one Hydro Vortex. He has no switch in, so there's no point in him trying to switch something in. Let's take this hit. He doesn't know I'm Waterium Z. He might suspect it because I haven't revealed an item yet. Um, but Waterium Z does 39% minimum here. He is way below um, that amount. And this is to max Defense Rotom. So if he's maxed his Death Rotom, it takes 39 to 46%, I think. He's definitely in kill range from this point, so I do click the Water Z move. We are going to see the Hydro Vortex from the Floatzel, of all things. Um, and ladies and gentlemen, this is why I love Floatzel. This is why I wanted to use it this season. Um, it's, a, it's a fantastic one. I love it. Um, offensive Water types are underrated. Um, so Water, uh, sorry, Rotom Wash does go down, and in comes the Dougal, which is Sil Valley now. Because he switched this thing in, I can see the slight pink tint to his uh, to the spikes on his head and his tail. I can tell he's the fairy type, and I did confirm that by looking at the stats on the bottom page. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm just going to stay in and weaken this thing because I think Megaloplin wins. Um, because I got the plus one attack, and I think this is some kind of bulky Sil Valley, um, the bulk up's actually going to mean I can take two multi attacks. He does take two waterfalls, um, but I do live uh, this second multi attack. Now, if I had have clicked. Um, bulk up that turn just then, I would have been in a really good position, um, but I do just take that thing out with another waterfall, so Rose has got two kills, now at this point, it, if I had outsped, if I had sped correct this um, <laughs> Gallade correctly, I might have won, although without this HP investment, I might have just lost to that still valid just then, so I have to click Aqua Jet here because then I know return is a guaranteed KO on this thing. Um, he just clicked Drain Punch, he's going to get like no health back. I also clicked Aqua Jet in case he had the Shadow Sneak. If he did have the Shadow Sneak, he would have taken me out and that would have been really bad for me. But um, the Aqua Jet means I'm able to get enough damage off to the point where Lopoli can come in and click Return. He cannot switch this thing out because otherwise uh, it dies, his um, Nihilego dies. Um, I do just click the return and this uh, Gallade just goes down. So now, if he's not scarfed uh, with his Nihilego, I win with Lop. If he is scarfed, he has to lock himself into Dazzling Gleam or Psychic, because I will. Uh, I, I did the counts. If he's like normal timid, all that kind of stuff, um, I do live the uh, Sludge Wave or Power Gem. He does reveal Psychic, that does take me out. He's now going to get to plus one. This is where Unaware would have been kind of nice, um, because it would ignore this beast boost. But now we're going to play a kind of prolonged game. It's my spe especially defensive Cliff Able versus his Choice Scarf Nihilego. Because he's Choice Scarfed, I know he's going to have to click Psychic every time. I'm now playing a game of does he crit me, does he um, get a Spideff drop. So I'm going to have to softball here. It's my play 100%. Um, 
Knock off, I think after one Moon Blast will kill this thing, but I'm going to go for two Moon Blasts to be safe. Moon Blast does more than Flamethrower does. So, um, I'm going to have to click Softboard again, because if he crits me, I'm going to be really low down. Uh, he doesn't crit me, and he doesn't Spadef drop me again, so that's two Psychics now, where he hasn't got any kind of hacks on me. Which is good, and I'm now at a point of health where I think, okay, I can go for my first Moon Blast here, because Leftovers and uh, Softboard has nearly put me back to full. Um... I am going to click the Moon Blast here. If I get a special attack drop, I will be golden. Um, when he goes to the Psychic, he doesn't get a crit, he doesn't get a Spit F drop. Um, I go for the Moon Blast here. And Knock Off does 20, uh, I think it was, what was it? Because I'm Calm Nature, so my attack is a minus, uh, is minus nature. Um, knock Off is, I think it is 16 to 22%, and I don't want to take a risk. Um, I'm just going to click Softboard again, and that kind of gives me the game as long as he doesn't get any crits um, or any spadef drops. Um, I'm going to be literally almost back at full again. I can click Moonblast and then I can click Knock Off once again. Uh, sorry, Knock Off for the final move to try and take this thing out. He goes to the Psychic. Um, again, he doesn't get a crit, he doesn't get a spadef drop, which is great. Um, I do get Moonblast to land and I don't even think at this point a crit Psychic can kill me. Um, all I have to do now is click Knock Off. It's in guaranteed range from this knockoff now, and it will die. So as long as there's no shenanigans whatsoever from Psychic, we saw shenanigans against Aster last week. Are we going to see shenanigans this week? We are not. Luma does survive that, and we are going to click the knockoff and take this thing out and get the win. Finally, after such a horrible, horrible <laughs> losing streak, we finally, finally win a game, uh, and it had to be against Greg. Now. Sadly, um, it really puts Greg in a bad position in terms of trying to qualify for playoffs, so sorry about that, Greg, but while I can't really make the playoffs anymore, I can't even finish with a positive differential anymore. Um, I am here to try and get as many wins as I can until the end, so um, sorry that you had to be the first one. But basically, I was so happy this game because my floats were set worked despite my miss prep. Um, Crook did a massive amount of work, as did the Clefable actually getting two kills in the end. Um, I managed to play the end game really well, uh, in my eyes, with what I had in front of me. So, good game, like I said, Greg. Make sure you check out all his links and stuff in the description. Um, I make it up against, who is it? Uh, Texas Rangers and uh, Randy next week. So, make sure you stick around for that. Uh, it might be a bit late because we still haven't played, and today is the deadline for that, so oops. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. Make sure you check out the GBA links as well. Check out like the power rankings and stuff. Um, and I will bring you a team builder and a battle next week for my game versus Randy. So, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you later. Bye.